This is a fact. You will never, ever, ever get to great if you aren't willing to trash the good that may have even got you where you are. That's how it is. That's how it goes down. And that's what we're going to be discussing today. Because in this world, a lot of things are just given to us. In this world, we have access to a lot. It's not that hard to get along at the very basic or bottom of the barrel level. But you know what? Most of you don't want that. Most of you don't want that bottom barrel level. You want great. You want to be ahead. You want to be in another echelon. You want to do better, right? I mean, you say that, but do you really want that? Because if you really want that, you have to be willing to trash the good to get to the great. And I'm going to go into that in depth. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to talk about it. And I'm going to make it hot for you on this episode of Mr. Binge's ADD Experience Live. And listen, I don't just come in here and talk the talk. I actually walk the walk. I will show you some moments in my life and in other people's lives where tr you had to trash the good to get to the great. And it's funny because I wasn't going to post this one. I wasn't going to do this at all, but I just kind of wrote it up on the fly. And that's why I'm actually recording so late. I just wrote this one up in my head and thought about it. And you know what? It's got to happen because I needed to trash the older idea to try to get to something better and start making that move. So welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining in once again. This experiment, this this flow of podcast has been going on strong for about 40 something episodes now. And now I'm getting into what is this? Episode 83. Yeah, episode 83 is what we're on right now. We're going to crack 100. We're going to crack 150. We're going to crack 200. We're just going to keep on going. And it's going to be excellent. And I'm, I'm just happy to be doing this. I get excited when certain creative activities are building up a flow of energy. There are speed bumps. There are things in the way, improvements. But I always end up learning. I always end up pushing myself. And it actually makes me feel good to, to see the movement, right? Like when you're riding a bike and you want to ride to the mall, you're not so happy that you got to the mall. You're not so happy that you're just sitting around on the bike. You get this certain exhilaration from that trip. When you're riding that bike, you're going fast. Suddenly, you know how to, you know how to steer. Maybe you can stand up. Maybe you're going fast enough where you can take your hands off. Maybe you can do a catwalk on just walk on the back wheel. Whatever it is, once you get into that speed, that exhilaration, and you started to let go of some of your average ways of riding a bike, now you're on to something new, you're on another level. I'm going to get into all that. Um, just really wanted, just, just was so happy about this little mental breakthrough I had. And yes, to get to the great, you will have to have these mental breakthroughs. You think you've got everything figured out? No, you need a mental breakthrough. And you will do that by scraping your knees, bashing your head, stubbing your toe, getting lost, getting misunderstood. There's a lot of things that are going to go into this that are going to cause you a little heartache. But as long as you understand that you're in the process of going from good to great in some areas of your life, then you'll start to get it. You'll start to understand it. You'll start to feel it and you'll start to flow better. And we can talk about the obviously bad stuff that you need to trash at some point, but Things that are just good enough are particularly damaging. So particularly damaging. So I need to make sure that I express my opinions on that before we go on any further. And yeah, uh, you know, it's kind of a lighthearted thing. I've been doing this um, for a couple. Where are we at? As I said, episode 83. We're do, we've been doing this for a little while. I've been doing the Instagram live thing. I like connecting with the people here. I like what live offers. I do like Instagram as a platform. You can just kind of go there and post your pictures or whatever. Good people on here to talk to generally. As long as you don't go too far out into the weeds, you can stay away from a lot of dumb arguments. And, you know, it's good promotion and whatever. So I, I like it for a lot of reasons. But I was in the mode of doing things a little differently. And I started with, it, it's the end of the month, right? It's the end of the month going into the beginning of the next month. And every month I start looking at things that I can kind of change, I can update, I can rearrange to do a little better. This is what I do every month. If you thought I only did this at the end of the year for New Year's Eve and the coming of the next year, I do it 
11 other times in smaller increments just to get through the rest of the year. So this month, I was thinking, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this differently? I need a snack. I was thinking about going and getting some flan or I don't know. I like to eat like flan or yogurt or pudding or something like that. I just like to eat that stuff once in a while. I pull back from ice cream all the time because I was getting too expensive and I was turning into a fat ass. So I started eating flan and tapioca or whatever. So I'm thinking about this and I opened my cabinet looking for a snack and I'm thinking about going to the store and getting some flan or something, right? It reminded me to find a picture of bat flan. That was funny. I like my bat flan. It's like Batman, but flan. So I was going in the cabinet to get a snack and I saw this rice that had been sitting there and I don't eat a lot of rice, but it was just sitting there and I was like, I wonder how hard it is to make rice pudding. I just thought about that. How hard is it to make rice pudding? Maybe I could do that instead. Maybe I can, don't have to get up and go anywhere. Maybe I can tighten up the game a little bit, try something new, go in there, have some rice pudding. Turns out it's not terribly difficult, especially when you have a rice cooker. And that was the actual hump that got me over. I was like, huh, you can cook rice pudding in a rice cooker. I only used it to, I've only ever used my rice cooker to cook rice plain, no, no vegetables, flavorings, spices, or anything thrown in while I'm making the rice. I do all that afterwards. I mean, maybe some salt or whatever, but I wasn't like cooking inside the rice cooker. I was just cooking the rice and then I would use the rice for other things. So I decided just to jump on chat GPT and I was like, Hey, chat GPT, I want to make rice in a rice cooker. Didn't even know if this was possible. Didn't even know if this is a thing and I said, sure, here's a recipe. I was like, there you go. And just that little push to do something a little better, to not spend the time going out to make something at home that's, that's cheaper, healthier, easier to get to. I was like, this is great. So I made rice pudding, but that was just a little example of one of those little changes you make to get something moving forward. You have to constantly be thinking about this stuff. But what happens is we get too comfortable in the regular, the mundane, the quote unquote good. And instead of it actually being good, it becomes good enough. And you don't want good enough. You know, when someone says, how is this? And you're, oh, it's good. They're probably just being polite. They're not going to say it's whatever or it's eh, unless they're your friend. You need them to say, wow, this is great. Wow, this is exceptional. Or they need to give you that look, you know, when they when they bend their head down a little bit and open their eyes, they're like, oh my God, this is good. That kind of, like, oh, and they start slowing down, they're elongating their vowels, like, ooh, oh, this is good. You want that kind of effect, right? And you don't get that from just, oh, it's good. Because good is average and average sucks, as we all know. So you got to keep pushing yourself and trying different things. Now, you probably have a lot going on and that's understandable. We all do. There's, as I mentioned in yesterday's podcast, even, and I'm going to keep mentioning this because it's something that we all are facing. You've got internet going on. You've got social media going on. You've got this extreme extremely difficult period of new technology arising. You need to be familiar with YouTube. You need to be good on Twitter. You need to be familiar with chat GPT. You need to know about crypto. You need to know about stocks. You need to be in good with fixing your own car because now automotive prices are up and it costs more for repairs. Now you need to be good with a wrench. Oh, there are problems with the mental health in society. So now you need to be better at meditating and thinking about things. And you need to be better socially because people are very fragile when you speak. So you need to learn how to speak a little better. And you probably shouldn't go around using the word fragile because people will get upset by that. Not that that didn't explain the point in general, but yes, that's what just happened in real time. I messed up and I need to get better with my speech. So this is another one of the things that I think about. How do I talk to people? How do I come across? What am I saying? 
And this takes up a lot of mind power to constantly be thinking about what should I be doing? How should that be going? Why isn't this working? How can I evade the recession? What are my family going to think? What are my kids going to think? Who's going to need to know about this? Oh, I shouldn't worry about what people think. Oh, but I didn't worry about what people thought. And now I'm getting exited out the company. Oh, I didn't worry about what they thought. Now I'm being written out of a will. What's going on? I thought they told me not to worry about what people think. What does this even mean? Okay, I should understand my emotional intelligence better. Blah, blah, blah. You get it. There's so much going on in our heads right now. It's just the way things are. A lot of information, a lot of things to do. And it's difficult. It really is. It's not just you. It's a lot of people. So what does that mean? When there's a problem, someone tries to sell you a solution. So who comes along? You got your Amazons, your Googles, your Microsofts, your open AIs, your Boston Dynamics, everybody coming along selling you a solution. They just want you to buy into something and quell your emotion. They want to quell your passion, your drive. You go to a doctor's office. They don't want to make you better. They just want you to stop being in pain. And there's a big difference there, like getting better and not being in pain. Because if you, let's say, you know, there's a bell curve and you'll say about at 30% or so, that's, you know, below that you're in pain, you're, you're in bad shape. They're just trying to keep you above 30 35, 40% good. And like, you know what? They're fine right there. Let's leave them alone. And there's a place for that. There's a place for leaving things alone. But for the most part, we're not just trying to be running at 35, 40%. We're trying to operate it at least. I mean, if we're not operating at 50%, we're just half-assing it, right? Literally half-assing. If you go any further, now you're starting to actually get somewhere. The 60th percentile, 70th percentile. The 80th percentile, that's when you're starting to really push, right? And this is you personally, not just you and your peers, because you may be well beyond them. But if you and your your personal drive, you're operating at 80 percent kind of constantly, that's a good place. Now, what does it take to you to really get to that next level? You need to push your limits much farther. You need to push into that 90th percentile, 100 percentile, not of the population, of what you're capable of. You need to start redlining a little bit. Because I mentioned this before, but our bodies, our systems, our cognitive, mental, spiritual, social, and physical systems, they all give us warnings before we're actually in danger. And because of that, we tend to have the slightest little bit of, oh, that's hurting, and we pull back. And this is when they tell you, if, if you ever dealt with a good physical trainer, they'll say there's a difference between physical strain and being challenged. Right when some people feel they're being challenged, they pull back and they never, and what they're doing is like, no, no, what I'm doing is good enough. And they're barely maintaining, right? They're barely working the treadmill. They're barely getting up the sweat. They're not challenging. They're not in the challenge zone. They're just in the I don't want to be in danger zone. And if you don't want to be in danger, you're not going to get anywhere near the challenge zone, let alone actually be in danger. So what do, and the reason I brought up the, the companies trying to sell you things is because we get caught up in buying into so many different processes, so many different things that don't want you to look at the problem. They're like, oh, you just need a Band-Aid. Oh, you just need a little bit of this. You just need a, and you'll be fine. And they'll just drag you along until you're you're worn down, until you can't get up, until you, the, you know, you're, you're, you're just falling apart. And that's through atrophy. Entropy of the system. Entropy. Definition. Things that are left alone will tend to fall towards disorder and they'll break down. If you kind of leave something alone and just let it be average, it's not going to just be average. It's actually going to start declining. It's going to start falling off. So you need to make sure you're pushing yourself and challenging so you can actually grow. The growth isn't what hurts you as much as the not doing anything. 
Are you comfortable in your chair? Well, let's sit there all day and watch what happens. You need to push into challenge just a little bit, push into discomfort just a little bit, and take a walk, take a run, take a jog. Park a little farther down the street if you live in California. I know how it is. California parking is bad. You got to park two miles up over a hill down the street. Maybe you'll get one of those little line bikes to scoot around to get you closer. But what I'm saying is these companies and in turn our society has started to push this ameliorating mediocrity upon us. Ameliorate. Soften the blow. How about that? They want to soften the world for us. Put little bumpers on everything. And that's not how the world really is. That's just somebody selling you this idea of you can be a lot safer than you need to be. Like you don't need to, you need to have a certain amount of challenge to where you can grow your own defenses, where you can grow your own integrity, where you can grow your own communication style, where you can deal with alternative voices, where you can get on Twitter and not be pissed off because someone said something you didn't like. Guess what? There are a bazillion people on there. A lot of them are going to say things you don't like. I'm not talking about the extremes. I'm just talking about the basic stuff. For all of my friends who went with me through the Star Wars great fan base battles of 2017, I'm sorry, in that time in my life, I didn't have my, my fortitude and my ability to speak up as high as it should have been, and there were some unnecessary arguments. But I still hold to my beliefs. You'll have to check out, you'll have to check out my Star Wars podcast if you want to know how I felt on that. But anyway, back to it. Um, and a lot of the reason why we don't push into the challenge zone is because we're afraid. We're afraid of losing. We don't want to lose something that we've already gained, right? For whatever reason, there's social pressures, there's the imposter syndrome. We may think that, oh my God, I did this once. I don't even know if I could do it again. I'm not sure how I did it. And that's valid. It actually is valid. You may have done something that's kind of a one in a lifetime thing. You may have done something that you want to hold on to and keep, but you can't be afraid of that challenge. You need to be able to trash the good because the good, the just good enough, that mediocrity is holding you back and you don't realize it. I tell people I watch, I watch strange shows sometimes and people ask me, why do I like watching certain shows? And I have a reason for the shows that I like and dislike. But this one show in particular is Hoarders. I don't know if you've ever watched Hoarders, but it's, to me, it's a terrible show. I'm glad that it exists, but it's kind of a terrible show. Yeesh. I don't know what it means for me that I watch Hoarders, uh, what a psychi psychiatrist would say, what a psychologist would say, because I like to watch Hoarders. But basically, it's about people who have this mental imbalance that causes them to hoard things and keep collecting and keep gathering to the point where it starts to destroy their lives. Something was good for them and they kept on adding it, that just good thing, and it caused them to slow down, caused them to bog down, and it gets to a point where their houses are getting repossessed, family is leaving them, they're getting physical ailments that they can't cure, hoarding. It's if you're looking at seven deadly sins, it falls under the category of gluttony. You've just got all this stuff and you're trying to consume it all. So why do I watch hoarders? Anytime I watch hoarders, I can sense a little bit of myself that holds on to something for too long. I can sense a little bit of myself that like, you know, if I go to the art store and just get one more paintbrush, that'll be the one that really makes my art work. That'll make my art pop. If I get this one extra paintbrush. I look down and I've got, I've got plenty of paintbrushes. They may not be the greatest, but I've got plenty. Don't believe me? Here there. And this is after I've thrown away some of them. I know a lot of you may have paintbrush collections that are far too large. I've got collections of other things that are far too large for my actual performance, right? This is because this is how we've been raised in a consumerist capitalist society. 
to collect all this stuff and to start hoarding. And we just collect it. It slows us down. We waste money. Then we, we have to sell it or when we move or give it away when we move. And then we go somewhere else and we start buying crap all over again. And this is an example of one thing that I realized in popular culture. I was like, that is a thing that I can't hold on to. That is a thing that I need to let go of. Because if I don't, I'll become like these people on hoarders and I'll start hoarding on this stuff. In fact, I'm already probably too far into hoarding territory in whatever. It might be ideas. It might be girlfriends. It might be water bottles. It might be ideas where you get too concerned with consuming one thing and you start hoarding it. So I watch a little bit of hoarders and I'm like, boom, I got to get rid of something. What is that? What is that? Is that too much of this over here? I've got, I've got too many plates. I don't need this many plates. I'm going to give some away to Goodwill. I've got too many DVDs. I'm going to, I'm going to back them up and then save them and then sell the rest of the actual physical copies at, at a garage sale or something. I'll put them on eBay. I'm never going to watch these again. They're just in the way got too many books, too many of this and that. If you're building a library and you're actually structured and organized and you're actually utilizing this stuff, it makes sense to you, then do it. There are DJs who hold on to extremely large music collections of CDs and vinyl. Fine. There are book lovers who are holding on to all of these massive tomes of books that they've been reading. Fine. There are artists who collected lots of paintings for whatever reason. They love it in their house. They're collecting, they're flipping, whatever. Fine. There are exceptions. But when you can't move or when you want to get something better, like let's say you're collecting, let's say you're collecting, oh, okay, look back to the paintbrush example. I'm collecting paintbrushes. The more I collect paintbrushes, that comes at the expense of me actually painting. So I can't do the thing that I want to do because I'm doing what, an earlier version of me thought I should do and thought I should keep doing. So that earlier version of me doesn't know what's going on right now. Right now I have enough paintbrushes. I've seen the differences in all the felts. I've seen the differences in all the sponges, the, the plastic ones, the uh, palette knives, the you know polyester ones, the sable brushes, etc. I've gotten to that point. But now my young me is still thinking, oh, we need to buy more brushes because that's what we did before it and worked out. That was then. Stop collecting now and start applying what you know and what you have. Finish it up. Keep working it. If it's holding you back or it's causing you too many cycles in your mind to go off, then you're holding on to it for too long and you need to let it go. And that's what you can't be afraid of. Because it's a two-part, I don't know if you noticed, that it's a two-part problem. You're, you don't want to let go of what's holding you back that's just keeping you in mediocre and good, and you don't want to push forward into the new thing. Either, either you're being so held back by the old thing that you're, you're just swimming in the quagmire, quagmire, some people call it, quagmire from Family Guy. His name actually has a meaning. Look it up. If you're stuck in the pit, you're stuck in the quicksand of all the stuff you've got, that's one level of the problem. You can't even start considering pushing forward. On the other end, if you're trying to move forward and you just got all this stuff dragging you down, you can't even move properly. You can't, you can't get to your workspace because there's so much crap in the way. That's a problem. Your family can't visit you because you've got so much crap in your house. Nobody can sleep over, so they've got to spend money on a hotel and they're not really interacting with you because you can't clean out the guest room. These things are holding you back. And this isn't just about physical things. This is more about, in general, challenging yourself to move forward by trashing what you think was good. My mother used to actually hold garage sales and I didn't get it for a while because she would hold a garage sale and she'd get everything ready and my dad would start putting out the tables. He'd go to the store, get some sodas or something for people to when they come by. 
they had this whole production going on for garage sales. And shout out to my auntie Vert. She she's the master of the garage sale. I don't know the last time she's done one, but hers were epic. She would even collect stuff from the entire neighborhood and bring it to her house to sell. Anyway, I asked my mother, so what why are we doing this garage sale? What what are we trying to make money in? She's like, no, you're not trying to make money with a garage sale. It's like, why would you have a garage sale where you're selling stuff and you don't want to make money? She's like, no, it's not about making money. You might make money. She was like, oh, you might make money, but the point of the garage sale is to get rid of stuff you don't need. And that kind of took me back. I was like, you don't want to make money. You just want to move stuff that you don't need. And I, I thought about that and I was like, you know what? There's a lot of stuff I don't need. And it's like people are paying me to get rid of my trash. It's great. So now I can put trash out on there. Somebody comes by. Hi, how's it going? He's like, hey, I'll sell you this for a quarter. I'm like, boom, they give you the quarter and they take it away. It's, ma it's magical. You just put up a few signs and people come take all your trash away. It's great. But you have to get to that mindset of, I want to trash this. I want to get rid of this thing. And let me check something right quick. All right, had to adjust the settings for a second. Hope the connection's a little better. But yeah, you get into situations where you're just, where you're just stuck, right? And you don't want to be there. So getting in the habit of trashing what you don't need. Now, earlier on, I said you may trash something and you come to find out you need it. That's, that's usually not a problem. You usually know what you can get rid of. If you go in your closet, there are probably clothes that are out of fashion, that are out of date, you wouldn't wear again. They probably don't fit because you've gained weight or you've lost weight. They may have holes in them that, you, that are just unsightly. Those, those shoes that you're never going to get repaired. Make the decision, either repair them or give them to somebody, send them off to Goodwill or whatever, donate them, doesn't matter. Point is, this consumerism that we've gotten into has started to slow us down. And now it's not just the physical stuff, it's the mental stuff also. So you got to trash that good. You know, hey, it's good. It's right there on the shelf. It's cool. Trash it. Move on. You can build more. You don't need every one of what you're collecting. I can guarantee you that. So as I said earlier on, monthly, I take this little, I take kind of a survey of everything that I have. I take a look at what I'm building, what has been built before. And I'm like, you know what? I'm building this. I'm going this way. I don't need this other thing. I do this every month. I take a look at things. And I'm actually thinking about doing this with Instagram. The way I'm doing the lives here, I may need to get rid of this, even though it's doing okay. I may need to get rid of this and jump on another platform. I didn't think I was going to be doing this, but I might need to get onto another platform. Amp is an app that I want to try out. So I need to be okay enough with trashing several episodes here on Instagram and seeing what happens if I go over to Amp and do that over there. By the way, you can still follow me at Mr. Benja over on Amp. And we'll see how that works out. But all of this was happening around the first of the month. And I wanted to share with you because I was trashing old thoughts. I was trashing these thoughts that had been sitting around. I'm like, hey, this is a good thought. Why don't I keep doing this? Good does not lead you to great. And you should know this. If you want another example, you can think about the concept of escape velocity. Escape velocity is the speed necessary to break out of the current orbit. Mostly that term is reserved for, um, what do you call them? Space shuttles. Mostly that term is reserved for space shuttles trying to break free of Earth's gravity field and leave the atmosphere and get out into outer space, to get into orbit, to get into outer space. Escape velocity. There's a certain amount of speed that you need to do to break through and it needs to be sustained. So you've all seen the, the shuttle launches where huge amounts of flame and energy, people are standing way back, pushes off from the ground, starts out slow, builds up speed, but then it's got to keep that speed. It's got to keep that velocity 
up to the point where it's gone far enough, high enough, and fast enough to break out of the current atmospheric pressure. Not like the pressure of the atmosphere, but the quote unquote figurative pressures. That's what you need to break free of. So your escape velocity is going to vary depending on your situation. How much are you going to need to push forward and get away? How much are you going to need to fire up your engines? How much of the shuttle that you used to get you into space are you going to need to eject and drop off later? Because every, every space shuttle that takes off, you see them ejecting pieces of the fuselage, the, the other parts of the ship that they don't need, the gas tanks, they eject this stuff. I don't know where it goes, actually. It burns up in the atmosphere if they're high enough or, you know, falls safely to the ground and breaks up in little pieces. I don't think it would do that. So I'm going to guess it burns up in the atmosphere or starts floating, whatever. But they eject pieces of the ship as they go along. They're like, yeah, that got us this far. It's not going to get us any farther. Eject it. Get it out of there. We need to maintain our velocity. We need to escape this thing. We need to get to great. Greatness is out there. Greatness is not where you are, right where you are. And we, oh my gosh. And by the way, another reason I'm so hyped about this is because we're halfway through the year. It is already halfway through 2023 and you're still sitting there holding on to something that you shouldn't be holding on to. A couple of minutes ago, I was holding on to the idea that I didn't need to do this podcast. I would just hold it to myself. No. To get to great, I need to say these things. I need to get it out there. I need to start posting more of these thoughts authentically, and I need to start having more of them out there. So as I said, I am trying my best to live this as I speak it. And I've done it enough times where I feel comfortable in saying, you know what? If you want to do this too, I can show you how I got to where I am with this constitution of myself, with this integrity of idea, with this strength of character that I can do at the level I do, I'm confident in speaking it because I've done it multiple times. And don't disregard this trap that we've gotten into in this world. Don't disregard how insidious average is. They just want you to be average. They just want you to be okay with these smaller things. I'm not saying be entitled, but challenge yourself to actually grow. You've all seen plants growing through the concrete. You can't say, well, if I was in good soil, I would have grown better. Excuse. You need to challenge yourself to push through the concrete and grow. Gather up all the moisture you can, get that water pressure in there, in the bud or in the seed, and break free. Reach that sunlight. Personal example. Um, I won't just speak abstractly on this. I'll give you a personal example. At some point, I felt that I needed to step away from the game industry. I was doing good things. I was building. I was meeting people. And then something hit me and said, you know what? I am doing a lot more. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of stuck doing a lot of what I don't want to do. Should I be pushing forward and trying to break through things, or do I need to reevaluate? Is this really going to get me ahead where I want to go? And I realized in my head, I had always told myself I want to do certain things in video gaming, and I accomplished most of them. And at the point I was at, I didn't want to push in that direction any further. It did damage me in some ways. I wasn't prepared for that decision I was making, but I am totally okay with stepping back and saying, you know what? I've done enough of that. I'm okay with trashing that and moving on to the next thing. And maybe the word trashing is throwing you off a little bit because you're thinking of throwing something away. Instead of thinking of throwing something away, Instead of thinking of throwing something away and losing, think of clearing a way to a future where you can gain 
where your energy is better expressed, where you can move more freely, where you have more freedom and security because you're not in danger of all this stuff that's been holding you back, damaging you further. So yes, trash the good to get to the great. I said that. But maybe you want to remix that in your head a little bit. Clear the way for greatness to happen. How's that? I use trash the good because you th- start out with the negative concept and people get it a lot faster and they're going to connect with it. That may be even why you clicked on this because why would you want to trash the good? Well, that's why. But yes, clear away for yourself. And I've been happy with my decision. Even if the decision has caused me different challenges, I know that I'm on to something greater. Have I made mistakes by trashing things in the past, by getting rid of things and letting go of things in the past? Yes. But most of them are, are safe. Most of them are doable. Most of them are repairable. I haven't done anything crazy that I can't really back down from. In fact, there was a statement that you don't want to, you want to live your life in such a way that you will not regret having done or not done something. So keeping those two in mind, I don't want to have any regrets of what I didn't do. And I don't want to have any regrets of what I did do. So there's a little bit of thinking in there for you, a little homework assignment. So I think I'll wrap it up with this one. Um, Your energy is being wasted on being mediocre. The mediocre things in your life should only be there because they're waiting their turn while you do something challenging and great. If you're not doing much challenging and great and everything around you is mediocre, then you need to start doing more of that challenging greatness thing. Challenging yourself to get into that great area. Have you plateaued at the gym? You're, you know, you're doing your gym workouts and nothing else seems to be working. Maybe you need to up the amount of times you go. Maybe you need to up the weights. Or maybe you need a completely different vector to think on. Maybe you need to get better sleep. Maybe you need to eat better. Maybe your mindset needs to change. Maybe you need to see a nutritionist. Maybe you need to talk to family members who have a body build that's similar to yours and see what they do or they don't do. Maybe you need to not eat less, but eat more of certain things and less of these other things. Maybe it's not about what you're eating. Maybe it's about how you're eating. Maybe it's not about food. Maybe it's just your body's having some psychological reaction to your social situation. That's possible. A lot of, a lot of reasons that you may have plateaued in the gym. I used a health example because once again, I've experienced certain things and I've tried to fix them. I've challenged myself. So this isn't going to be an easy journey, but that's your homework. That's what you take home with you after you've done your job, after you've done what you think you should do, after you've maintained your current life. Your work is primarily to push that challenge wherever you can. I don't know what that means for you, but make the challenge. Do more of something, less of something, figure things out, try new avenues. Maybe you can schedule it every month like I do or every half a year or every quarter, whatever the case may be. Schedule some time where you're starting to challenge yourself. Post on social media more or less. Try a different platform. out. Do this. But take a real careful look at that mediocre of those things in your life that are just average. Why are they like that? Why can't you push forward? Where is an area where you can challenge yourself? And don't blame anyone else. This is all on you. Don't say, well, they need to, or that person, or my job won't let me, or I can't. That's not where you start with any of this. You start with you. How can you challenge yourself? I know I annoy people, but that's part of the price. Anytime anyone excels, they are going to draw the ire of people around them. It's almost, almost guaranteed. 
in most situations, you start really knocking stuff out of the park, then your current group of peers that have been okay with you being mediocre, they might have a problem with you pushing forward. It may not even be your fault. They may not even know you. They may have known somebody else like you that said, oh, here comes one of those people like that. And they try to keep you in this little average zone. This happened to me when I came to one job. Everybody there was, was treating me funny. They're like, ah, oh, you don't understand this and making jokes and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, they make jokes here. So I started making jokes back and they were like surprised. And everybody was kind of joking and clowning and, you know, underappreciating what I was doing and pushing. I was like, oh, what is this? Then I ran into other people at the company that were like me in certain respects. And I noticed the company treated them that way too. And I was like, oh, this whole company is used to treating my type of person this way. Oh, I see. You can't just come here and do X, Y, and Z because they'll think you're like the rest of the people at the company that fit the description. So that was my challenge. What I thought was fine was not fine in this situation. So I had to up the challenge. I had to challenge myself and push through that. I had to not just do a little better. I had to hit an escape velocity of the way I behaved and presented myself not to denigrate the people I was around, but to let them know I'm not that dude. I had to go above and beyond. Talk to somebody, get confirmation, go to my desk, send an email, walk right back over there. Did you get the email? Good. Walk from that person, go to another person and say, hey, listen, I sent them an email. This is how it's going down. This is how it's happening. I did that. I just want to confirm with you. And they're like, uh, okay, sure. Go back to my desk, put notes inside the company database, put notes inside the company wiki. Like, hey, this is happening. I'm coming in. I'm doing this. Go to meetings where I'm not invited and saying, hey, listen, I talked to such and such. They know this is going on. I'm being extra. I know. But guess what? I need to break this vision of how my type of person, whatever that may be, whatever that may be for you, I had to break that concept. I had to break through the atmosphere. I had to hit escape velocity to take on another position. I had to trash what was good. It was fine. It wasn't like I was being seriously mistreated or anything. Everything was good. It's like, oh, it's all good, man, whatever. No, I needed to get somewhere great. So I had to break through that. People got upset. Why is he being extra? How come he's doing this? Why bad man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care. I'm pushing forward with my challenges. And I broke into another echelon, another layer, another strata. I had to get to that other level. People aren't going to like you for that. Nobody likes it. You see software companies, new technology comes out. Ah, we don't like that. Just like when Uber and Lyft came out, cab companies lost their minds. It's like cabs are good enough. It's like, so we're trying to do something great. All these cars sitting in parking lots, all these cars sitting on the side of the street, not being used. You're not giving money back to the American people. Let's bring a Lyft in here. Let's bring an Uber in here. Let's get these cars moving. Let's make some energy happen. Let's spread the wealth around a little bit. No cab company it takes too long to get here anyway. I mean, you never pick up your phone. I'm just using an app. How's that? I mean, you still got cab companies and, you know, car companies that drive you around and they have their purpose. They're very reliable you, on time. They can wait for you, et cetera, et cetera. They serve their purpose just fine. Also, a lot of times if I go to an airport, I don't want to meet up with some Uber guy. I'll just meet up in the airport and get a cab. It'll be fine. It's a lot more. And they know stuff too. So I don't have to run into any weird problems. It's outdated. Maybe, I don't know. Point is, what was normal and good at one point is holding back the great. So be safe, understand the risk, make sure you have a fallback plan if, you know, your shuttle is blasting off into outer space. 
there are a lot of dangers, of course, in trying to reach escape velocity, but you can handle them. You're fine. You'll be good. You'll be great. You just have to get in there, fuel yourself up, do the calculations, make sure everybody's cleared out the way, fire it up, let them know you're coming, fire it up, get loud, make sure the flames are kicking, and push yourself off. Do that thing that you got to do. Get rid of what you don't need and get to the great. Clear the path for that. My name is Mr. Benja. This has been Mr. Benja's ADD Experience Live. Please remember to keep creating and doing good things. See me at mrbenja.com and all of the other social platforms. You want this audio, you catch it later on YouTube and any of the podcast streams. That is me for this one. Thank you once again. Peace.